It's the Daily Dog. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Daily Dog. Thanks for being with me today for another song reaction and breakdown. Uh, happy Friday, everybody. You made it to Friday, and you know what Friday means. If you've been uh, active and listening on the channel for the last uh, several weeks, you know that Friday is the day of the week that we reserve for these long masterpieces that we can really dive into and experience together. So it's going to be a little bit of a longer video today, but I really don't care. And you know why? Because by popular demand, the band today is Dream Theater, and the song is is Illumination Theory. Uh, I am uh, really excited to dive into this one. Thank you to all of the Dream Theater fans for suggesting that we include this one on the channel. Uh, before we dive in, a little bit of background. So this piece was uh, released in September of 2013. It is the last track on their on their, on their 12th album, which is self-titled. Um, it is a long song. It's about 20 minutes. The version that we're going to listen to today is in the 19 minute range. And this is a live recording. So it's them doing this concert live or this piece live in Boston at the Boston Opera House with a full orchestra. And it looks like from what I've spot checked some some choristers in the background. We've got an entire stage full of great musicians and what uh, I think is going to be a really wonderful, marvelous piece. Um, when I read a little bit about uh, the piece, I found a quote from Petrucci saying that this song is at its core about uh, the things for which people will live or fight to live uh, or die. What, what will we die for? What will we kill for? Right? <laughs> Big questions <laughs> from the band. Uh, they're asking, what is it that... Uh, personally consumes us, that drives us to action more than anything else. Um, you know, what, what is it that we're passionate about? What, what is it that makes us put our, you know, flag in the ground and say, we're, we're going to stand up for this specifically? Um, I'm excited to, to hear it from front to back. I did uh, spot check it a little bit a, a few nights ago, and I can't wait. I really can't wait. Uh, it is in five different segments. Uh, some of them are instrumental and some of them have, have lyrics. Uh, but uh, it's, it's really, really going to be a, a fun thing. Um, just so you know, uh, I have found a piano transcription of uh, Jordan Rudis's part. <laughs> uh, it, 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 there's a lot of notes there. Uh, but in looking at it, uh, it's not exactly complete. It's missing some measures. It's missing some parts, especially for what the orchestra is going to play. So I'm not going to be following along uh, with you the whole time with the uh, with the the sheet music or the transcription uh, visible. We're going to be mainly looking at the at the the performance itself. But just so you know, if you see my eyes kind of darting back and forth, I've got the um, the performance video on this side of my widescreen, and I've got uh, the uh, the transcription on, on this side of my screen. I'm gonna be sort of darting back and forth to sort of uh, see if there are some elements musically that um, we can uh, glean some, some great information from, from the transcription. So if there's a spot like that, I'll pop back and forth. Uh, but otherwise, let's just uh, uh, sit back and Enjoy the piece, shall we? This is Illumination Theory by Dream Theater, live from the Boston Opera House. Uh, let's hit it, y'all. Here we go. All right. Paradox, uh, dude, I can't. <laughs> My French is bad. And right off the bat, heroic. Yeah, what I wouldn't have given to know all that I know now about Dream Theater back then and be in the audience to hear this. It just looks absolutely epic. They're in D. D major. But some of these chords are, they're doing again modal mixture. They had two diminished over one for a little bit.
two straight um, Aconchitoras on downbeats. Right, where it leaps to an accent of dissonance. Uh, really is an operatic thing to do. Tugs at the heartstrings uh, and sets up those accent of dissonances to uh, resolve. Okay. Let's get it, y'all. Twelve eight, one and a two and a three and a four and a. Look at Jordan's Jordan's hands. Like I wish my hand was big enough to, to play some of those voicings like that. Full uh, half steps. think that orchestral musicians don't love playing stuff like this. They're wrong. Look at the faces on those orchestral musicians when they touch them. They're having a blast. This is stuff is fun to play. I'm looking at the bit of a tran of the transcription here, and it goes from 1016 to 1716 to 1016 to 1516 to 1016. <laughs> They're grouping 16th notes and just just altering uh, the beats a little bit. Groupings of three, groupings of two, right? And uh, and just going on from there. Uh, I love the um, the production of this too. We get to see all of the band members in this one shot doing their thing. Uh, great stuff so far. Still in D, but it's in D minor now, instead of D major-ish at the beginning. How many kick drums does he have in that one kick? It looks like four. Alright, here he comes. Getting ready for the second uh, movement. Where are you willing to live for? What are you willing to die for? Or die? When your back's against the wall Yeah, your time's uncertain Just hear this question No standing by But yes, you're blown up for ten What are you willing to kill for? Or kill for? Seven, eight for a second there. And I love that Jordan still just reads music, reads his own charts in each show instead of uh, memorizing it. This comes from uh, his training, I think, where he's comfortable. Of our shared humanity. That's Yeah. 
overwhelming. All of the sounds. It's overwhelming how good it is. Big dominant there. Okay, number three, the embracing circle. I've ever come across a band, a prog band like this, that manages to balance um, the needed pacing and musicality of a piece, the meaning of a piece, with these unbelievable uh, chord changes and riffs and just licks that they're playing. Uh, some bands overdo it on the licks and some bands overdo it on the chords. There's just a synergy with how they're composing these pieces that I think makes them the leader of the pack in, in a lot of ways. They're at the top of their game and that they're at the top of this genre, I think. I don't know if I've heard uh, a current group do it better than them. Okay, this is cool. In the chart, it's got um, no bar lines in this. It's sort of uh, sort of free form, and they're kind of holding a D major chord, maybe a D add nine uh, through this. Uh, and there's all these different cues for wind chimes, or and it's hard to see a little bit. Uh, all these different types of sounds that are going to be cued to come in at different points. Follow the light, my friends. Danger. Mm. Our fears and um, these temptations are seeking to take the light from us, maybe? Wonderful. In a broad six, A major. We went from D to A as a plagal movement. Voiced right, these common practice chords are just unbelievably heroic and can just reach us. It's all of these people trusting each other and playing their individual part, trusting the leader to keep them in time, and we offer our sounds, and it blends with everybody else's sounds, and it makes this uh, thing that's greater than the sum of its parts. It's part of what enthralls us to make music together. Okay, I have to back this up. So cool, so cool. So I wanna show you how they got from A back to D, okay? Uh, I wanna see if I back this up enough. Let's do it here. So I think we're here. Oh, 
Watch this. This is an A chord. A, B, E over G sharp. E diminished over G. To an A. To B. So take a look at this. So this is the chart, right? So this is that A chord that they started with. And this A chord is tonic. In A, the three sharps lead us to tonic, right? By the time we get to this A chord, it's a dominant. And um, a lot of these groups do these modulations where you're going along in one key and they just shift to another key. That's perfectly fine. We call that a direct modulation. This is going to be a like a, a pivot chord uh, type of thing, a, a modulation within uh, with in the context of a phrase. So we start what we start this phrase with this A chord being tonic and we end the phrase with the same A chord being dominant in a new key. So here's how it works. This A chord here resolves uh, next to an E chord. It's dominant over G sharp. It's third. We would call that a 5/6, the 5 chord but in first inversion, and the six refers to the interval that's above the bass note, that G sharp to that E, okay? So that E chord, then when we get to this particular uh, uh, next measure, it changes from an E major chord to an E diminished chord, right? We've got E and B flat and in a G natural, E, G natural and a B flat, right? And so that can't be a dominant anymore. E is dominant in the key of A, but when E turns to a diminished chord, it can no longer be dominant to A because that's just not, <laughs> that's not how it works. Uh, when we have diminished chords, diminished chords happen at a couple different times in the course of a traditional uh, key structure, right? It happens on the leading tone of a key. So this E diminished chord could be leading tone to F right? But we also get diminished chords on the second scale degree, especially in minor keys. So in this instance, E diminished could be the two chord to D, D minor, right? So when we're going along, I'm singing or, or thinking A to or, or one to five, and then this chord being two, and then that A becoming five, right? And then we land on D and it's D major. So that, that diminished E chord becomes like five uh, or a, a modal mixture from D minor itself. I want to back up and show you that a little bit again. It's so wonderful. Just a little spot that we can pick out how adept they are at, at, at moving from one key to another, especially when they're dealing with the orchestral musicians. I think we're here. That's one, do, T, then that would be fa, and that A becomes sol to unbelievable, great stuff. And then you see this is back like uh, saying the same stuff as we did at the beginning. Right? And it's over a D pedal, and this is uh, that two diminished over that one a little bit. Mm. It sounds like movie music, doesn't it? There's those opositores again, leaping up to that dissonance on the downbeat, and then it resolves in. It's a it's a taking a leap of faith, and then it and then it holds us emotionally. Different sound. And as I'm looking a little bit at the uh, transcription here, there. Uh, they're having some rests on the downbeat, and that clouds the meter because they're not giving us a true like, hit on one. This is like an eighth note rest occasionally on these downbeats. 
that uh, can make it sound off filter, but it's just in three. We're switching to four. They've been in uh, in D minor, and they just transitioned to relative major. With again that suspended fourth over um, over the third of the chord. Right, we did the exact same thing at the towards at the beginning over the D chord, but now they're in F. All right, and James thinks I should be able to sing along with him. I don't know the words. Surrender, trust, and passion. Yeah, 
Nobody is in their seats. Everybody's up and just... Music does have a way of bringing us all together in support of a higher cause, a cause greater than ourselves, an idea greater than ourselves. And these epic songs, when they're performed like this, just, I can guarantee you that the people that were at this show just went away from it being lifted. And when they think about it seven years later, they're still lifted by the experience. Uh. they get to see. Thank you. That is our show. They get to see. They ended flat seven, flat six, sorry, flat six, flat seven, the one, in city. Where they had never been. Thank you, good night. Where they had never been the entire rest of the song. They ended in C. When we consider all of these profound questions, wow, they deserve that. Applause. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Wow. You know, it's it's interesting. Um, when, when we consider the types of questions that they were asking, if we really do consider them, um, we become changed because we, we, we come to know ourselves a little bit better and we're changed. Maybe that's how they got to see uh, at the end. We consider all of these questions where most of the songs in D, either D major or D minor, and then that ending movement was in F, which makes sense. It's sort of the D minor part uh, of all that stuff in the, that fourth section moves to its relative major for, for that final section. And just those epic, those epic chords in the slower tempo. And then they move us to, um, to, to C at the end. We are newly formed. We are um, a better version of ourselves than when we started. And then we go on the path renewed and refreshed. Uh, and the path is also renewed for us. We're not in the D path, we're in the C path, right? So it's it can help us out. The lyrics are great. Um, you know, it asks at the beginning, what are you willing to live for? What are you willing to die for? What are you willing to kill for? And then in this, um, it starts listing a bunch of uh, things that could lead us to those sorts of, of actions. Um, you know, what is so important to us? Mothers for their children, husbands for their wives, martyrs for the kingdom, fighting for your life, a soldier for his country, a junkie for the high, teachers for their students, vengeance for a crime, right? All those things uh, make sense. We've seen stories and heard stories of, of mothers risking everything for a kid or a soldier risking everything for his or her country or a junkie uh, risking life and limb to search for our, for their next high. Those are the things that can be motivating to us in times of weakness, in times of fear, in times of, of you know, like just pretty emotional and, and intense stuff, right? But at the end, if you open your eyes and you put your trust in love on those cold and endless nights, you will never be alone. Passion glows within your heart like a furnace burning bright until you struggle through the dark. And I think we all kind of have in our own way this past year. Until you struggle through the dark, you'll never know the joy in life. And I can tell you, uh, I my priorities have been realigned through going through this past year. Uh, I think for the better. 
but I think that's kind of what they're talking about too. Until you struggle through the dark, you'll never know the joy in life. It's forcing us to reevaluate what it is that drives us, what it is that's really important to us. And it's calling on us to seek out the hope and seek out uh, the passion that glows in us, the light that glows in us, and um, and try to tap into that as much as we're able to. Uh, what an emotional experience, <laughs> and it's almost an ex a spiritual experience, y'all. That it's unbelievable what they just did. I have to go listen to that again, like right now. So I'm going to stop talking to you, <laughs> so I can go back and listen to it again. Thank you to all of the Dream Theater fans for continuing to encourage uh, me to dive into this music and for uh, taking the journey with me as I'm discovering these. And hopefully we can help uh, new fans uh, discover Dream Theater uh, and the brilliance of these musicians and their compositions and their ability to perform it uh, as, as we go forward and uh, build this community. So thanks again. Uh, happy weekend, everybody. I hope that uh, you're all well and, and, and uh, you know, doing your stuff. And uh, we'll see you next week for, uh, for more editions of The Daily Doug. Until then, thanks for being with me and we will see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.